Are you guys ready to get started? Hi, I'm Kelly Spicinger. I'm Matthew Marquis. I'm Ernest Lombardo. I'm Shaket Kahnemann. And I'm Phil Bird. And we are Fly High Wetsuits. Fly High Wetsuits combines a wetsuit top with a life vest on inside. Now, listen to this. There is currently 5.5 million wakeboarders internationally, and Fly High Wetsuits is targeting that 5.5 million. Now, just before we get into all the details, I want to clarify on what wakeboarding is. Just as there's skiing and water skiing, there's snowboarding and there's wakeboarding. Now, we have interviewed over 60 wakeboarders and talked to two different companies and figured out four key consistent problems that they have while they're riding. One, that good quality wetsuits are really tough to find and they're really expensive. And also, they feel like their body restricted, movement is restricted completely while wearing a light vest and a wetsuit at the same time. And also, they want to be warm and be comfortable from the first possible day of the season to the last possible day of the season. Now, I knew that all of these problems were very viable because I experienced it myself. I myself am a competitive wakeboarder and water skier, and I've been doing these activities since I was five years old. And that's when we came up with the idea of fly high wetsuits. Fly high wetsuits combines the safety of a life vest with the flexibility and warmth of a wetsuit into an all in one convenient product. Now, fly high wetsuits is a wetsuit heater top that has life vest flotation padding sewn inside. Now, our product is made of 2 millimeter thick neoprene, which locks in your body heat, which allows your body to stay as warm as while you're performing. Our product also eliminates the struggle of finding a full body wetsuit by being upper body only. And we would appeal to our diverse, wide range of customers by being made in an extra small to a double XL size. Also, our product provides you free, guarantees you free range of motion. Now, free range of motion is your body's maximum movement, and it also allows you to perform your best. Now, all together, Fly High Wetsuits guarantees you an extension of your water sports season. Uh, now, even though that Fly High Wetsuits is currently targeting weight waters, we want to point out that our product can be used for any water activity, whether it is for, uh, whether it is for recreational purposes or competitive purposes. Uh, currently, our product does not exist on the market. What we found to be the closest thing is the Patagonia's Men Elix, and this is strictly for surf uh, rough riding surfing, and it does not meet any of the requirements. Okay, so for our MVP, we wanted to test the demand for our product, so we basically we got our product professionally made by Taylor, and then we listed it on our website for pre-order, and then. Um, so during that time, our only channel was Wix, but we quickly found that uh, we may want to expand to an indirect store later because customers wanted to touch and feel the product before purchasing it. So before we go on, I just wanted to go over some of the key things we spent money on during the MVP phase. So we created a prototype, created a video for our website to explain the product. We created our website, which would collect the pre-orders. We went to a convention in Wisconsin, the Think Tank Water Ski Convention, and then we ran Instagram ads to drive traffic to our website, which Marissa will play more about. Yes, so for advertising our product, we created accounts on Instagram and Facebook, but we focused more on posting on Instagram rather than Facebook, because that's where most of our target market, 14 to 24 year old wakeboarders and water skiers, would most easily be able to see what we're posting. And we also got a hold of some of the emails of some of the legit competitive water ski and wakeboard teams, and we were in contact with them about our product. And then we had a marketing promotion on Instagram, which is still currently going on. It cost $75, and from that promotion on Instagram, we got four clicks for our website out of the 1,500 people that we reached. 20 visits to our Instagram profile, and then we also got almost a thousand likes on the post that we made. And then to market our product in the future, we want to send our product to famous wakeboarders and water skiers that compete so that the people that follow them and that know them will see our product and want to use it as well. Now, Julie will talk more about the finances. Okay, so our total addressable market is around 5.5 million people, which means that's a $4.9 million market for us. So we're taking that 1% and we're going to take it into uh, about $14 million serviceable market. 
And then from there, we're taking the market share of that, which would be 1%. Then we learned that we also have a 50% conversion rate for every sale we made. And that being said, because we went to a recent water expo in Wisconsin, 50% of the people were like, this could be a revolutionary idea for us. And while the other 50% were like, all right, that's ready, a cool idea, kid, but not today. <laughs> and then our first year revenue for us would be uh, 7000 with that conversion uh, rate of 50%. So our price right now is a value-based price off of a wet sous vide top and a competition light vest. We put those two together. That's where we get our price of 250. Our cost of goods sold includes all materials needed and manufacturing, which would be 141 dollars and 33 cents. And our gross profit margin for our product would be 43.5 percent. So our gross profit for year one would be about 23 thousand dollars. And our number, number of units sold in year one would be 275. That does include the conversion rate as well. And then over the years from year one to year five, year one, again, we'd have a revenue of $69,000. Our gross profit would be $23,000, and our customers would be 275. But then when you get to year five, our revenue would be around 92000 Our gross profit is $90,000, and our customers is 3600 <coughs> So our pre-money valuation for our product is our company is going to be around seventy thousand dollars. This means we also have a discount rate placed at fifty-five percent because we are a very risky company because we are a startup. So our capital asks to be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars, and our investment equity is fourteen point seven percent. But in that capital ask, we also invested in a line of credit into that, which means we're going to go in and out of debt with you guys whenever we need more pre-orders. And if that way we have money to cover for those pre-orders in case we don't have enough money at the time during the first few months. So our post-money valuation would be around $92,000. So our capital ask for our first month of inventory is going to be $4,200. This will cover just our first month in general. Our prototype development is going to be $3,500. Our liquidity cushion is going to be around $5,500. Our trademarks is going to be $600 and our LLC is going to be $100. And then reasons to invest in our company is because the product doesn't actually not currently exist in the market. There's a very large serviceable market. Our internal rate of return is going to be 48.3%. Our money multiple is going to be 4.7 times the amount. And it's actually an expensive sport. Therefore, if you sell for more, I mean, they sell for more, so it'll be a much higher reward in the end. Now, here at Fly High Wetsuits, we want to remind you to stay afloat, stay warm, and stay flexible. We hope that you want to hop on board and join us here at Fly High Wetsuits. Thank you so much. How likely are people to spend $250 on a, on a suit? How likely? Well, currently, our key demographic is teenagers, so a lot of the time, their parents are paying the money to have the sport be funded. I know that my parents pay for most of my stuff, and all of my friends' teammates pay for most of their stuff. And I have a teammate team about 15 to 20 kids. What does a wakeboard cost? A wakeboard cost roughly, because you have to buy it in separates. The board itself is probably between 300 to 500, depending on the brand and what type of board you get. And the boots can range anywhere between 100 to 300. Plus, you have to do the buying. How much is a wetsuit? Full wetsuit. So a full body wetsuit, depending on the brand that you buy um, and the thickness of the neoprene, it can be between $100 to $500, really depending on the brand and the thickness. Are they substantially more restrictive than this would be? I, um, I, over spring break, I went to uh, North Carolina and we were at a cable park and I had to wear a full body wetsuit for the first time. and. Oh my gosh, I can barely even move. I don't understand how anybody really can do it. Um, I talked to everybody also that was there that was also in the full body wetsuits, and no one felt comfortable, but they just knew that they were going to freeze if they didn't wear it. So that's how. Hey, Philbert, you mentioned just quickly something about legal requirements for the legal uh, requirements. So our European our products have been legal requirements because you have to be Coast Guard approved. <coughs> well, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. flotation devices and that product, uh, the Patagonia Men's Ulex, is simply for kind of for comfort and a little bit of safety, but it's not meeting legal, any legal requirements. Have you had approval on, on that? Your so with style? The, so with this timeline of this class, we can't get, we weren't able to get the official Coast Guard approval, but we have technically the right amount of Coast Guard approved flotation in this. We just haven't gotten it approved because we don't have that time frame. 
So that's done. Is that a prototype right there? Yes, this is done. So show us what you what what it consists of. So um yeah. So um basically so how the exact design that we had, it looks exactly how we thought it would be. So this is padding right here, padding right here, and then this is the full body padding right there. You say padding flotation. Yeah, flat padding flotation. That's how I'm referring to it. Um, and then in the front, it's about the same. So padding up here, padding seam, and then um, there's two buckles. So the way that they had us, I talked to two companies, and they said the way to kind of get around Coast Guard approval with the stance of this class is to by adding the two buckles because if you go to a cave park you have to legally wear a Coast Guard approved vest. So if they see that you have two buckles on your vest, they consider it Coast Guard approved, but no, really it's not. So that was our way of getting Coast Guard approved for this class. Have you, uh, have you tested that? <clears throat> no, you have not. But you, you made that? So yes, made that. we had Taylor made it in downtown Barrington. Oh, uh, Barrington Taylor. Did, can you get feedback from the flotation, you know, something? The, the, Flyer, the material for the flotation is so, what, um, what, like six or seven, you know, uh, pads would, would generate in terms of flotation? Oh, so what we did when it came to our flotation, so originally we ordered flotation on the website, but when we got it in the mail, it was nothing like how we thought it was going to be, like thickness-wise and the way it felt with mobility. So um, we actually went out just over two dollars and we bought a Coast Guard approved vest and we cut out the material for that, and then we relayed it out in this um, in this, um vest. So how long will it have, like, I mean, it sounds like you investigated how you get Coast Guard approval. Yeah. Um, what does that time look like? Um, it can range, technically, so they have to, we didn't get the exact amount of time, but um, they have to Coast Guard approve every single product you make, because they can't just give, like, one for each because potentially like, you can change something or something could go wrong and it's not the exact amount they need to go through and individually do every single product you make. So with that time, it would be between, like, I think in order just to get something with something federal, it takes like six months, but we don't have, we didn't have like, no, I understand the time constraints. I was curious what the timeline is. Yeah, it can, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's more time than we would have for this class. Yeah, yeah. You, but in, for future, if you submit, you, yeah. it's going to be six months until you're approved. Yeah, but, um, I think at max, yeah. You guys said you were reaching out to colleges. What kind of feedback did you get from the college board teams? So the college teams that we contacted, they said that they were really interested in this product, but they had already bought their like life jackets and wetsuits and all their materials for competing earlier. But they said that if we were to contact them before the next season started yeah. next year, they would be really interested. Because I know Indiana, you know, personally would love this. Our lake is freezing cold all the time <laughs> and that's the biggest complaint that they get. So I would definitely, if you haven't reached out to Indiana University, do that as soon as you can. Um, especially with the you know, around, I know there's people that are standing there doing this. <laughs> I know for sure that I talked so much. So anyone have a pool that we can come to? Yeah. <laughs> so that fits, um, that currently that wetsuit here top is a size large, but when you add like the padding, it makes everything kind of a little bit different um, thickness wise. So it's a little bit different. Right? Are you guys targeting any specific, you know, areas like around us, like like Geneva and lakes, you know, looking yeah. at shops there? Yeah, so like when we did the marketing promotion on Instagram, we specifically targeted areas in Illinois around the cable parks that are here, and then also up in Wisconsin. And then um, when it comes to the collegiate, when we contacted, um, I have friends there on the Miami of Ohio water ski team, um, they talked to me about how they have, they all are in charge of their own personal like this and wetsuits when it comes to riding, so like they don't have technically a team one, but we would like to promote to the teams to either have that option or promote to each rider um, where we can make their logo onto our product instead. Okay, Matt, could you go to the slide on the financials? Oh. Sorry, yeah, the gross, the gross margin percentage. <laughs> uh, yes, no, 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 no
what, what's going on with gross, your gross profit margins? That you're making twenty three thousand on sixty nine thousand in year one, but you're only making ninety thousand on nine hundred thousand. Well, in year five, we actually that after that, that's when we expand even more because year five we actually hire. A, I put into account that we're going to hire a fifty percent commission sales team in Florida. Mm -hmm. And in Florida, there's six actual kill parks there, which means we'd have way more sales as opposed to here, where there's one in uh, Crystal Lake and there's one in like, Rockford. But there's also one in Wisconsin, too, that's really far away for us to handle. So it's commission? Yeah. Matt, did you say you uh, got a line of credit? Mm -hmm. What for? Uh, for emergencies when if so for our first month right now we have 22 sales, supposedly, but originally we were thinking that, so, all right, sorry. Um, <laughs> so our, our line of credit would be for extra sales in case we didn't ask for it. So right now, uh, they're asking for a line of credit. We're asking, yeah. we don't ask, oh, we don't. So that's not what that liquidity cushion is for. No. <laughs> so yeah, so that first month of inventory, that's for the first fail sales Five sales we have or five sales we have lined up right now, but in case there's more, we want a line of credit to make sure. Line of credit from the bank. From the bank, yeah. I, mean, I just I just had to say it because it didn't calculate out uh, for our post money valuation. Do you have pre-orders? We currently have eight right now. And how did you get those? How did we get them? Well, I did one. My brother did one. My family members, some of my family members, because we all do this, and they all thought it was really cool. And then we have a couple from school as well that uh, are way more than our ski kids. And then we have another kid who I've never met before that saw my post about it and put a pre-order in. He goes to our school. How hard have you marketed this to you know, the high school students? Because I mean, I feel like there's there's much more than an eight that would benefit from this and are active in the summer doing this. We, the marketing that we did, I think, could have been better reached um, and also, um, Probably not as much. We emailed all the colleges, but not all of them. So. Yeah. We had two or three responses on the first six that we had. Yeah, it seems to me that uh, anybody who would rent like uh, jet skis or anything like that would, would be providing a jacket like this to to the to people that are you know, and not to buy, just yeah. to, to wear. And you guys said you were the only ones to offer this. I mean, have you guys looked at any? Patent, you know, kind of technology. You know, so we design. actually did look at a patent. There's no, the patent that exists is for a self inflatable um, wetsuit uh, flotation that you'd have to pull the straps in order to float it up itself. There's nothing that is close to ours in the patent world. So technically, we can get a packet patent. And what we'd like to do as a company is license our product and sell it to a different company like Ronex or Liquid Force and have them take over it because they have a better field in the um, manufacturing range. So given the fact that you're not going to have Coast Guard approval for the first six months and you're going to want to see if you can sell this, what target market are you going to target that kind of can fly under the radar of, of Coast Guard approval? Like a, a university probably couldn't buy this saying it's not Coast Guard approved. You know, uh, like an individual maybe can buy it with a bunch of disclaimers, not Coast Guard approved, wear your own risk, blah, 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 blah. I think um, all the kids that do cable park stuff, the fact that we do have the two buckles, they would all be able to get away with it, technically. Yeah, but it is, it's getting away with it. That, yeah. that as a company, you want to make sure that it's your, the, the customer's liability, not your, of course. you know, liability. And one minute. Yeah, I'm just thinking that you probably want to really look at your uh, limited marketing and, and customer segments that could that, that are willing to accept a non Coast Guard approved device, where you can get traction to start making a lot of money and wait out the Coast Guard approval uh, process. You say Coast Guard approval? Um, yep, yeah, I think we could actually do that. Yeah. But also, I think that the target market that'd be most concerned about the Coast Guard approval is the parents um, and not so much the teens because frankly a lot of teens don't love the Coast Guard approved but if they have like almost a way to get around it like competition tests and stuff 
they would more gravitate towards that. So either way, we could do a competition type of best flotation, or we can do Coast Guard approved, and either way, we'd be totally fine. Isn't the only thing that matters is if it works? Right? Well, yeah, I guess. Water, it's it's I'm just worried about cutting my ability of if it, if it doesn't work or if I get a ticket from the Coast Guard because they said that's not a. Yeah. Maybe if you call one competition and one a Coast Guard approved, that one's still pending. That may actually gravitate a certain yeah. subset of people towards the last question. Risky test. And then, are you is part of your marketing strategy to attend competitions and sell them at competitions, or is this all a place an order and we'll build the order, or you can have inventory, or? Well, actually, there's an event coming up at the Quarry Cable Park over in Crystal Lake that actually is um, the collegiate top eight um, water wakeboarding showcase that they're doing at the Quarry Cable Park. <coughs> um, we would hope to want to have a booth placement there so we can market our product, product easily to the universities that are there. But it would be more, you wouldn't be able to like buy and walk away with it. They wouldn't be able to buy and walk away with it. They would be able to set a pre-order and it would be sh then shipped to that. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, so thanks guys. Good job. Thank you, Matt. Good job. Good job, thank guys. Yeah. All right, so you guys got to sign tomorrow.